I can start yelling pretty easily. Yeah, I Terry, think. why don't you yell about this next point? It is literally <laughs> child's play for picking locks. Go ahead. Take it off. <laughs> well, it, it literally <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> I mean, what else? What else can you say? I've uh, you guys make me feel like a dumbass now. Well, I mean, <laughs> That's you, right. you know, it's it's being really, really good at it isn't child's play. That's but I correct. mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I I can teach and have I can teach a kid to, you know, to, uh, you know, to to open a, a pad, a normal master padlock in just a couple of minutes. Welcome to Uncensored Tactical where our goal is to talk about training, tactics, and more without being limited by red tape or a sterile bureaucratic environment so that we can bring you value and insight in a way that other organizations just plain can't. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for checking out another episode on Uncensored Tacticals Podcast. Let's get moving super quick first patreon uh we have just one today and unless i missed you please if i did shoot me an email and let me know i'll give you your shout out it is benjamin s who supports the show uh regularly through paypal i think actually not a fan of the patreon him that's fine uh disclaimers adult content adult humor adult language will be present on today's show uh and if you want to contact me let's keep it simple stupid the easiest way is just shoot me an email uh pertaining to the show here uncensored tactical at gmail.com i might be switching that soon in the next few months so just a heads up and that's it tonight i brought two big brains onto the show returning guests both of them to help us out Uh, i had a short topic i think this will be a short show under an hour and i have an article on my website under the faqs which is defending open source lock picking um, and some other skill sets as well uh, but mostly about the lock picking and the restraint escapes because occasionally people say, oh, no, you teach people the illusion of security. You teach them that there are flaws in security systems. How dare you? So that is the phrase or the quote that we are going to address tonight. So, uh, Terry, you want to do a short plug where people can find you? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Too loud? <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram at CDI Tactical, and uh, really, that's um, that's the extent of my 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 presence on the web at this. Point. So beautiful. You want to uh, fo- yeah. follow me there? Send me a message there. And Matt, all right, Twitter, uh, status quo pod. Email the status quo at gmail.com. Website the status quo.net. Patreon sign up link is there on the bottom. Beautiful. All right, let's get rocking and rolling. Uh, do you fellows have a drink in hand tonight or is it just me? I actually got referred um, Buffalo Trace whiskey by a friend and it's terrible. So I'm drinking it with ginger ale tonight just because I don't want to throw it away. You guys got anything with you? <laughs> Did I give that to you? No. No. Huh. More of an. Uh, uh, Passerby in the hallway recommended it to me. I wouldn't say yep. friend. Copy. Uh, I'm drinking a margarita, actually. Mm. Hi- Hydrate or die, man. Hydrate I got to work die. tomorrow. Hydro homie. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you guys want to check out that article, go to uncensoredtactical.com, the article we are referencing today, and just click on the... Let me make sure I give you the best information. It should be the FAQs tab on our homepage. And then you will see something that says, it's the first link. It says, what if bad guys learn how to lockpick? You go ahead and click that. That will bring you to the article we're talking about. It does need some updates. I wrote it maybe three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. So I'm going to update it uh, after we do this recording. I'll make some adjustments to it because some of the verbiage is now no longer accurate. But and I'm going to add one more point to it. So it currently says, 11 reasons why I promote the open source skill sets that I teach. So let's get right into it. Point number one, there is nothing proprietary here. So if you're not familiar with that big brain word, uh, proprietary, uh, secret, uh, hidden, inaccessible to the general public. So almost every single padlock, door lock, uh, handcuff, and the like can be purchased on the free market in the U.S., usually with the click of a button online or even in person with no ID check, no regulation, nothing. So you can buy these items, you can take them home, 
You can cut them in half and you can go, huh, I wonder how this works. Oh, I wonder if there is an exploit here. I wonder if there is a hole in this security system. That's point number one. So there's nothing that I give the public that they cannot learn on their own. So it's not like I have the super secret codes to the football for the president and I'm telling everybody what they are because they're hidden and proprietary. So that's not the case. So fellas, if you'd like to weigh in on point number one here, the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, you can literally go on Google and this is actually a good pro tip. If you're ever going to buy like a gun safe or a floor safe or something mm -hmm. like that, you can Google the model number of that safe and put it into YouTube and you can see if maybe there's a some uh, a five minute defeat of that particular piece of security equipment. Uh, this information is freely available, and there's really the, the the idea that block picking is some kind of mystical magic. I think is a lot of just movies more than anything. I saw him do it in NCIS. Ooh, yeah, the general. So I guess secret agent. Only, <laughs> oh, yeah, the admiral's Gestapo, man. <laughs> Jesus, I, watching that show as a kid and watching it now makes me want to throw. I love it. I love how they're the good guys and they go, "Boss, but we need a warrant." I just watched it last night, boss, but we need a warrant first. And the boss goes, "We don't have time." Oh, okay, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your rights, America. <laughs> <laughs> so much freedom, man. Terry, you got anything on the uh, proprietary? There are things in life that are proprietary. I think, you know, like the nuclear codes, I think was one of them. So I'm not giving you something that's secret or or unattainable. Well, well, I think the, the other point there is if it's, you know, if it's knowledge that someone can figure out on their own, it certainly isn't, uh, it certainly isn't proprietary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like it's a, any of these really are secrets that, you know, that you've been given and, and, you know, and told to, uh, you know, to keep to yourself, I guess is, mm -hmm. is kind of where I was going with that. But, um, you know, more to the point, um, it's, you know, it's knowledge and I don't agree with restricting any knowledge other than, you know, some very, very, very narrow cases. And this is things like this are not even, anywhere near in my mind um close to being something that could be justified to be controlled right so are you willing to murder somebody over it i think the answer right is clearly exactly the, clearly right. the answer is no right all right so first point uh for those those of you that are listening if you ever attend training with us in the future there is a good chance that i myself pat i'll be teaching and to date uh terry from cdi tactical is the only person who i uh teach with so we collaborate on quite a few projects, including the, the lock picking escape and entry courses that I teach. So you might meet him in the future if you do some training with us. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Number two, we're going to zoom right through this. Number two, and I'm going to change this verbiage as we go. Uh, also, let me check one link here. Number they two. They fuck you at the drive through They fuck you at the drive through Number two, the <laughs> old title was agencies and companies are fucking you. I am not. And maybe the new new phrasing should be, other people are lying to you. Please don't be mad at you. Please don't be mad at me for me telling you the truth. That's are you not. selling out? Yeah, no. Okay. Check out my coffee. <laughs> so <let's... laughs> please buy my coffee and take my course. Yeah, no, let's let's be clear. I have been in people that listen. Let's be for clear. A while. Fuck me. People that have listened for a while, they know this. I have been approached by a lot of people for affiliate programs. I only have one affiliate program that I currently have, and that's with Fortress Canine. I have taken bites from their canines. I've seen the training. I've seen the home life. I know the person personally that runs that company. Uh, that's the only affiliate program I have. People have said, hey, you should do a coffee with me. And I said, Respect <laughs> respectfully, no thank you. Just to clear the air. Get it out there. Full disclosure. <laughs> So companies and agencies are fucking you. I am not. Let let me give you a really, really good, I don't know if it's economics or math or logistics or whatever, but let's lay this out. So your agency that you work for, or if you purchase a, a security product on the free market, the company, right, interchangeable agency, company, either they do know about the security flaw of their product or they don't. Right? Are we? That's that's pretty easy. You're with me so far, right? So you go get hired by a police department, 
and they either are aware of these techniques for how to break out of handcuffs or they are not. Let's take that. Certainly. The, let's take that to the next step. If they are aware, then why have you not been trained specifically for how to defeat those so that you know what to look for? And why have you not been warned about the specific types and tools and techniques that people will use to break out of handcuffs? So that's your agency another, failing you is one option. Go ahead, Matt. Here's another question too. What happens if you end up in your own cuffs? Also true, which cops are not taught. Many, many cops. There are, and, and there are exceptions to this. There are certainly some agencies and certainly some units and certainly some individuals that take it upon themselves to teach this, but it is not widely known by almost every single law enforcement officer I've met in my life, and there are thousands and thousands of them that I've worked with and known personally. Okay. Imagine. Go ahead. On the way, man. Oh, so B, um, so A, if they are aware, why have they not trained you? B, if they are not aware, wouldn't you also call that a failure? So someone is equipping you with a tool that you're supposed to risk your life on the usage of and depend your life depends on the use correct usage of. And the people that gave you that, they're not aware that there's 13 year olds on the internet that teach you how to break out of those with a paperclip. That seems like another huge failure. And Matt, I thought you might want to add a point here, which is police are supposed to be the only ones with the complete monopoly on violence, which would also include the monopoly on lawfully detaining people with restraints. Yes. You Wait, add, what? The monopoly on yeah, the monopoly on violence. The government is the only one that's supposed to use this force of violence to to grab people and detain them and to throw them into cages. No one else can do that. That's oh, uh, okay. I can't throw someone yeah, into a prison say. cell as a civilian. Right, right. I, I was uh, yeah. That that was going down a different road than I was thinking. Oh, well, maybe it My was fault. for the audience too. So I'm glad you asked. Uh, and Matt, I thought you might want to expand on that a little bit that monopoly on violence and, and usage of restraints and things like that. Um, and if you have more anything, s- well, my brain was on a little different track. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I'll start with that first. We'll circle back around. All right. So look at it, look at a handcuff key, right? It's literally a piece of metal with a tab on it. That's mm-hmm. all it is. It's an ancient piece of technology. And here's the thing. There's an entire market of, of items, including a plastic box to put around a set of handcuffs because they are so poorly designed and they're such an ancient piece of technology that it's really not, you can find something you can find later on a run. You can break out of handcuffs with. Yes. So this is obviously a well-known failure, but as to your second point, so yeah, cops are supposed to be the only ones that have the legal right to detain people, to throw them in cages, to hold them against their will. Absolutely true. So shouldn't, if they're the only ones that are supposed to do that, shouldn't they be like really, really good at it and like really understand it? Well, here's the problem, Pat. When you have a monopoly, you don't have any competition. So you can (laughs) suck at what your product is. And guess what? You're out of luck because if you don't want to use our security force, uh, too bad. And if you decide you want to do your own security, well, we might kill you. Uh, especially if you shoot somebody and we respond to your house after the shooting because you have to call us. And even if you give a description of what you're wearing and even if, you know, you might still have your firearm in the low ready because, well, you just shot somebody and who knows if there's multiple assailants. You don't know that. Uh, There's a chance in the confusion and chaos that happens in all bureaucracies, you might get shot yourself. Why do I have a feeling I'm no longer connected? No, we got you. Nope, you're there. Just a okay. tactical pause. That's all. Gotcha. Uh, let's switch <laughs> this, this over to the civilian side. Terry, I know you know quite a bit about um, security systems and surveillance and things like that. Um, when you move into a home, for any, for me, you, Matt, if any of us in, in the audience have ever moved into a new home, probably almost every single person alive, uh, nobody probably tells you about the shortfalls of the security system that is currently in place in the home, including, hey, you might want to watch out because this is a $7 pad, a seven dollar deadbolt on your front door, right? That's not common that realtors tell you that, right? They'd have to know it first to tell you. Ah. Well, and they would have to want to tell you, uh-huh. which, and uh, even if they did want to tell you, they would also have to be fairly new at their jobs because... Uh, if they did know and they did want to tell you, if they had told 
two or three previous clients and got the reaction that almost all people give when you start talking to them about security, which is their eyes glaze over and they say something like, well, you know, I just do whatever the insurance company says I have to do or, you know, so on and so forth. They finally would get discouraged and just quit telling people about that because, uh, quite honestly, 99% of people or more don't want to hear it. And so, you know, it's sort of a self-licking ice cream cone. So, that sounds sexual and violent. I like it. Self-licking. Doesn't it? Cone. It's, gov it's government all over it. Uh, so what about this, Terry? What if you go to the hardware store and you buy a deadbolt and it says pick proof and bump proof and... You hand it to me, Pat, and I take it, and I go, oh, well, I just picked it open, and oh, look, I just bumped it open as well. Would you be mad at me because I opened it, or would there also be someone else to blame, like maybe the company that just lied to you and took your money? Well, certainly, but uh, uh, taking my me hat off and putting my regular person hat on, mm -hmm. my response <laughs> is going to be, well, uh, nobody knows how to do that anyway, uh. and why, why the hell do you know how to do that? You're a douchebag. Let's let's get the obvious. Let's out go there. watch a football game. Let's get the obvious America. Let's get the obvious out there as well, which is it says pick proof and it says bump proof. So even if you never even if you don't know what those two things were, you can go on YouTube and go, how do I pick this lock? Sure. How, how do I bump this lock? Because people a lot of people don't know what bump bump keys are, uh, you know, the sure. un uninitiated. So that's a that's an indicator that people should be looking those things up to see. Oh, what is that? And then they can learn how to do it and they can defeat that system. So just to recap, please don't be mad at me for telling you the truth when your companies and your agencies are lying to you. That's my second point. All right, let's zoom right along. Point number three, I learned it on the internet is not an acceptable courtroom excuse. So maybe we'll change that to uh, <laughs> personal responsibility is not shifted because of the source of information. You are responsible for your actions, right? Absolutely. So dude learns to lockpick. Goes to a house, fucking robs or burglarizes the house, burgles in. I like that word better. Uh, mm -hmm. So should I be held accountable? Well, of course not. If I if I have information that is, hey, this hole in this security system exists. Well, actually, does that mean that the, matter, does that mean the bad guy gets to go free because he learned of course it somewhere? Not. Of course not. I mean, you're asking the wrong person here because, like I yeah. said, I don't think that, uh, um, you know, regardless of what I, I teach you how to do, if you go out and do something, um, you know, generally accepted as evil with it, uh, that's on you. Now, you know, I try very hard not to train anyone that I don't want to train, I Absolutely. guess would be the best way to put it. That's important. But, too. um, but beyond that, uh, you know, it's completely on you. So yes, personal responsibility is not shifted because you learned information from a different source. You, you are still nope. responsible for your actions. You know, Pat, also you, when you teach your courses, you do due diligence. One of the first things you say in your classes is, all right, we have to ask two questions whenever we're doing target assessment. We have to ask, number one, do I have the moral slash legal right to enter this premises? Yes. And two, how fast do I need to make this entry? So this is, this is something that you put in the students' minds. I mean, you do your due diligence. Yes. Even yeah. if we want to try to hold the teacher of skills responsible. It's like if I go take Taekwondo, right, and then I go and uh, roundhouse kick or whatever the goofy stuff they do, somebody in the face, that doesn't mean like the sensei at the dojo is responsible. Absolutely. Right. Well, and the framing is important too. Uh, like you guys both said, if I said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm doing a free class for any thugs in the neighborhood. If you want to learn how to beat up old ladies, come to me. <laughs> that would be wrong. Yes. Of course that would be wrong. And yes, I absolutely reserve the right that the, it hasn't, it has happened for, uh, in a couple requests via things like Instagram and, and emails like, Hey, can you teach me this thing? I kind of want to be like more covert. And I'm like, covert for what? And they're like, you know, to kind of hide my techniques and tools. And I'm like, you better be r real clear here. And I've said that a few times, uh, some lady mm -hmm. on Instagram who I went to her page, her husband's a cop 
And she messaged, this is years ago, she messaged me and she said, hey, I work in a prison. Can you teach me how to get some tools past the guards? And I'm like, absolutely not. Goodbye. Block. <laughs> Besides, wow. all she's got to say is, hey, uh, don't run my bag through the metal detector today, fellow officer. Mm-hmm. So, Just saying. Uh, yeah, some good points. Yes, I absolutely reserve the right. As soon as somebody says, Jim, I got this neighbor who's kind of a major pain in the ass. I'm going to break into his shed and do this thing. Get out. Those are my five. first and last two yeah. words. And I've done that, yeah. too, and you'll see a case study of that in my book that's about to come out in hopefully less than 60 days. All right. Let's, well, go ahead. certainly. Oh, I, I just had a similar sort of, of anecdote. I mean, as you can well imagine, I get things like that in the, uh, you know, in the long range shooting training oh, God. Um, every <laughs> once in a while. Well, you know, I mean, I, it's not nearly as often as as what you would think, probably because, and I think that's just more a function of. Um, uh, I think if you spend five minutes listening to me, you're going to have a pretty good idea of where my head is, and uh, you know what I might or might not consider acceptable. So, but you know, I've I've uh, I've I've had a couple of people that I've basically said you need to. You need to go somewhere else just because I didn't, there was something about them that wasn't right. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, that's good enough for me. I don't have to justify training or not training somebody uh, any more than that. So, And I think all three of us are probably real strict with that rule. Uh, the, course, the people that yeah. we choose to associate with, I think we have, I think the three of us have some pretty strong boundaries with who we choose and, and choose not to do business. Absolutely. With. Absolutely. All right. Let's go to uh, number four. The, the title in the article for number four is all of this information is already out there. So I guess another phrase would be the cat's already out of the bag. So there's no putting it back in. That's not an option. It's not, okay, well, let's just wipe this from everybody's memory and then we'll be more secure which even then it wouldn't work, but cat's already out of the bag. And in this step, again, I have two videos on the website. One is a guy named uh, uh, Tobias who does a bunch of uh, security assessments. I see him here in the video opening a firearm safe with two paper clips. It's Mm -hmm. so sophisticated that you can do it with a one cent tool. And then I have right below it, uh, how to pick a door lock with a paper clip by what looks like a, I don't know, maybe <laughs> 10, 11 year old kid. Yeah, 11 ish. So the cat's are already out of the bag. People already know that these things exist. And like we talked about the movies earlier, if you've watched any movie or TV show where super spies have gone into places, you know that these tools and these skill sets exist. There's no wiping that info off the face of the earth. So now it's on you to try and defend against that, which I also teach people how to do. I, I like your example here about uh, the the safe opening thing because I actually had a legitimate call, a legitimate request for that just a few days ago. Yeah, and oh, um, well, I know, right? But um, and and it's funny that uh, that this person thought to call me, but um, he did, and it was it was a completely legitimate. Um, uh, request. It was one of his, uh, one of his employees has a, uh, a gun safe with the, uh, famous extremely failure prone, uh, S and G electronic lock on it and it failed and they changed the batteries and did all these, you know, thus various and sundry other things to, uh, to try to get it open. And he said, you know, I bet I know somebody who can get this open. And he called me and, I talked them through it and in fact they did get it open. But um, you know, I mean that's that's a uh that's an exception, you know. I, I think that's one of those um one of those things that I don't see teaching a class on how to do that. If you really want to know how to do that, you'll you'll either be taught uh how to do it or you'll figure it out on your own. That's a good point. Yeah. And, uh, people have asked me occasionally, and no, I don't teach any technique, period, about how to open up safes. That is an administrative function. Uh, I'll talk more about it in some other shows. And, and, and when it's not, you'll know <laughs> if it's okay for you to be doing it. Yeah. And you will be provided training and tools and, you know, 
And if you really want to learn how to do it that badly, you can figure it out yourself. All that yes. stuff is out there. But um, yeah, I can't see anybody going, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Right. I, and I, I teach the course for emergency situations and breaking into a vault is not what I would call an it's emergency an, situation. Right. That's good. Yeah. So I don't teach any of those. Tech. I don't know a lot of those and I don't, I don't teach any of them. Uh, but uh, this is really important for value for the audience. Uh, gun safes, like the ones that are the size of a shoebox, they are wildly, wildly insecure. So, so many of them are insecure. Please do yourself a favor. And like we said earlier, before you buy a gun safe to protect your kids' lives and your life, you know, if you're going to keep your gun safe in a quick access box under your bed where your kids will never look, before you purchase one, please punch in the, the model number and the make on YouTube and type in opened or cracked or picked or bypassed with it. They're wild and insecure. Uh, oh, I, a matter of fact, I can't think of any that aren't. And um, this this is worth your your admission price to the show tonight. If you have a gun safe and you have an electronic lock on it, do yourself a favor. Find a competent locksmith who works on safes and have it replaced with a high quality mechanical lock. Just do it because one day it's going to fail. And when it does, it will cost you a lot more to have that guy come out and, you know, drill your safe open. If he can't use a couple of the, the tools that do exist to open electronic locks, um, you may as well just save yourself the trouble and, replace it now or at least make sure it's got a backup key yes at the very least and many do not all of them but many do and be aware of how that backup key works so read that fucking manual or again just go on youtube a lot of safes will have a a facade over their backup key spot Mm -hmm. and some of those backup keys are really really some are very secure and some are very insecure if you're familiar with um like a like a warded, I'm sorry, like a uh, wafer lock. Tubular. Yeah, tubular locks and warded locks are both pretty easy to crack with the right tools. Um, yeah. And some of the some of the choices for their key backup are very easy to defeat, so uh, be aware yeah. of that. All right, let's zoom on. Number five, have you ever seen a gun range or a martial arts studio? I think we alluded to mm-hmm. this a little bit earlier. There's a lot of overlap in almost every one of my shows, but maybe a new title for number five, because I'm going to update this article, it should be... Be consistent. So if you're a Karen and you're sitting at home and you're really mad at me because you teach the general public how to break security. Okay. Well, I hope you're just as outraged if people get into a bar fight and some of them happen to have been a martial arts student locally. And I hope you're just as outraged if there's a shooting and that person went to a shooting course at one point in their life. Oh, I think they are. (laughs) You, You know what? (laughs) <laughs> oh my that's a gosh. Good point, Terry. <laughs> yeah. That's a good freedom. Point. Yeah. Freedom is scary, guys. But let's I be Yeah, it is. Um th- that is pretty common though, right? Like mm-hmm. right? who sees like you see, you watch on the news, right? If you're sitting at home on your on your fat couch on your fat ass and you see, "Oh, this person beat up this old lady." Is your first thought, "I wonder if he went to a martial arts school?" No. People never fucking that, yeah. say that. They never say that. They go, what a terrible person. Because people are so removed from personal accountability, like we talked about earlier, where you learn something doesn't excuse you from your personal responsibility to use that correctly. So, Well, except if you're talking about shooting. Yeah, except shooting, right? Let, well, let's be clear. What happens? <laughs> what happens when a military person or a cop goes nuts and murders a bunch of people with a gun? Do you want that police department to be disbanded? No, you just hold, you say that's a bad person that did that. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you're crazy. I think you're wrong. Never happens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just well, that. Yeah. a mess. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, first of all, that yeah, that would never happen. And then all if it heroes. did. All heroes. Yeah. Including I'll, nurses, too. Right. And because I'm laughing doesn't mean that I think no cops are heroes. I just, just, it's provably false it's a propaganda no, yeah it's a propaganda machine i am pro person i'm pro human i'm pro liberty I'm pro freedom me too yes that's it let's keep it simple all right scooting right along oh yeah, real up? quick before yeah. we before we move on to that um off that topic yeah people can go to the military and learn how to be killers and then come back and use those skills to commit 
you know, mass shootings, bank high as hell. You know, there's even movies about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can teach you medical skills and anatomy and physiology, and you could go take that information and go torture people to maximize their pain and keep them alive to make them suffer. Uh, but that's like, that's not saying, oh my gosh, we should never teach anybody how to save a life because they might do something bad with it. I mean, what kind of, what kind of asinine, childish, preschool mentality is that it really is it really is something it really is childish we we have uh half the country yes yes oh my gosh probably more than that when if you can i bet you it's about 90 percent of people they'll have one thing they're about like this they're whatever their pet issue is that they just are all up in arms about but it really is something well one person might do this bad thing so therefore we can't let anybody else it's like the military man like yeah. you hear it all the time you fucked it up for the rest of us one person <laughs> fucked it up for the rest of us oh, how many for times sure. you heard that pat yeah oh god i don't i couldn't count ever it, <laughs> just thinking started. back to all the push-ups i've done because of somebody else yeah you start hey, there the you go i guess exactly. though be fair there are probably a lot of people who have done a lot of push-ups because of me so yeah, me too also true all right let's scoot along number six we're halfway done uh, the inf- This is an old article. It needs to be updated. But currently it says, the information here does not represent either of my employers, which at the time was the military and my local law enforcement agency that I worked for. Currently, we're going to do some adjusting here with the subtitles. Let's go with what people do in one area of their life may or may not have an effect on the other parts of their lives. And this, in this case, the lockpicking stuff, I believe is la- the latter, meaning this really shouldn't affect the rest of my life. We're going to get... A little deep on the framing at the end after point 12, um, the framing of the skill set, how I teach it, who I teach it to, why I teach it. We're going to go more deep on that later, but um, you got to understand that sometimes things are more than just the, the pieces. The whole is equal to more than the sum of the parts, uh, if you followed along with that. So what I wrote here was uh, I was currently employed by law enforcement, currently employed by military, and I did not. I didn't speak as a representative of either employer. Um, uh, let me see what I have. I, yeah, I kind of covered it a little bit here. I, I was here to help. I'm here to teach people to make more, make them more prepared in life, whether it's on at work, on a mission, or on a patrol, or in your personal life if you just come across an emergency. Uh, so the information here didn't represent my employers. That's why I was defending a lot of what I taught because it had nothing really to do with my professional capacity. It was just me as a human teaching other humans interesting things about security. Yeah, not a lot of argument there, I guess. I no. Hmm. Carry uh, on. Let let me do another yeah. example here because I had a really good one that was kind of adult content. So let's say let's let's dig a little bit on that. So what people do in one area of their life may or may not have an effect on other areas of their lives. Can you guys? Yeah, this is definitely out of date. Yeah. <laughs> so can you? I can think of something that if someone does in their life if they do these things really should not have an effect on the rest of their life. So let's say, uh, let's go a little weird, like sexual, right? Teacher has sex tapes. Yeah. Teacher has a sex tape. Oh my God. Okay, great. Well, were they a good teacher? It's really the only Who cares question. Had a sex asking. tape. Yeah. And, and you want to ruin someone's life over that, whether it was a mistake or whether they just truly enjoyed doing that. Who gives a shit? So let's say I, I let's say I have a, uh, a partner in my life, and I want them to pee on a balloon while I wear a clown outfit and we make love, right? Pat, stop, Ian. I don't want to be associated with you anymore. Okay, why? (laughs) Why? I'm not going to make you pee on a balloon. I'm not forcing you to do anything. (laughs) No, I'm just mad you put me on blast, dude. Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, let's flip it. What is something that someone, if they do it in their personal life, should affect their professional life or their social life? You guys got any ideas? How about, on? Yeah. How about a bank teller that steals shit from stores? That could be good. Or a cop that does drugs. Right. And then wants to arrest people for doing drugs. Ah, uh, yeah. The other half of that. That would be an issue, right? And that happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Un- understanding that people are, are humans, I think, is pretty important for point six here. So, uh, yeah, you know what, let's, let's add a big piece of value that I kind of left out here. And I'm glad that I finally did this podcast on this topic. So let's say you teach people the, the flaws in security systems. How dare you? You're bad. You're immoral. I can no longer do business with you. 
Does that phrase sound familiar to either of you guys? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got doxxed by a guy who I attended his course, and uh, he said, I can no longer do business with you. I found out that you teach the public how to pick locks. <laughs> <laughs> well good people in the public like well shit if that's all you found you didn't dig very hard did you <laughs> so the flip side is during his course he told active law enforcement officers because it was a law enforcement only class he said uh. our super secret information was passed like how to pick a lock and he said uh he said you guys should use this skill set and like break into everybody's locker at work and like play pranks on them and tricks and stuff it's really funny I get a kick out of it just send me an email that's great uh uh-huh, we love it and yeah, that's really funny. So he's telling people that are supposed to respect private pr- places and people who are supposed to be held to a higher accountability level. He's intentionally encouraging them to use this skill set to violate people's privacy. And in the some odd- cases w- would be illegal. Well, well, now you know why it was a restricted class. Yeah, great. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't want the public the, knowing that. Yeah, of course not. The audacity of this person man i mean to oh my gosh it did, number one the whole this is military this is law enforcement that stuff kind of just rubs me the wrong way anyway because number one and i'm sure you want to touch on this some point in time pat so i'm sorry if i'm stealing your thunder Go here for it. but you know we talk about I, at least i talk a lot on my show about the kind of the civilian military divide that's been built up and well guess who's helping putting bricks on that wall it's us it's us in these communities man and when you when you have kind of like just guys running around in like all, all the Spartan nomenclature and and nine line shirts and all this and the, I'm I'm a vet bro and that type of stuff and then you then you have to have this super secret arcane knowledge that goes along with it. It's just like, dude, we complain about how nobody understands us, about how nobody can can you know understand that that our thought process and feelings and emotions. Okay, well, who's helping put that wall up? Hmm? How about this one? We are the government. The government is the people. Okay, great. Well, then why are you keeping secrets from us? Good question. Yeah, good question. Hmm. Well, right. really, Pat, you're just keeping a secret from yourself. Yeah, duh. Uh, and Terry, <laughs> Terry, if you disagree with any of this or if you have some points that are different, feel free to jump in. I know that. Oh, I will. I will. I'm, you're I'm you're, just, you have you're hitting most of it. It's just permission. um, I, um, you know, I've been on the on both sides of the restricted course thing. And I can only think of one instance in which I learned something that I thought, huh? Yeah. I probably wouldn't have known that, you know, or uh, something like that. You know, mostly what the restricted enrollment courses are about are, is, uh, um, well here, I'm going to make some people mad, but you know, it's the truth. Um, the restricted enrollment courses are very often about um, you don't want your, you know, tier 1.5 high speed, <laughs> you know, low drag dudes getting spanked by a 50 year old dentist, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in a in a shooting class, because you've spent the last four years telling them that they walk on water and they have nine inch dicks of steel and they're going to and, you know. And then, you know, Fatty McFatterson, you know, DDS comes in there and like makes them look horrible and they don't want to see that. And at the end of the day, they they will pay uh, to have restricted courses so they don't have to see that. Oh, I can totally see that. Um, something else I wanted to add to number one is that <clears throat> I think I can't help but wonder. And I just lost my turn. Okay. So there are some some course content that's like if we're talking about like CQC, okay. So as a civilian, yeah, chances are you're not gonna grab four of your buddies and stack up on somebody's door. So I can understand that being a military law enforcement course. Okay, well, it has but been. but I, I have a big problem with the well, you don't need to know that. I'm not going to teach. Yes, the mm, attitude. No, absolutely. No, yeah. Right. There's a lot to unpack um, here. Let me yes, let me let, so how about if you let me worry about why I want to know that? Right. And, and I'm, and I teach that stuff. I mean, I, you know, I, I can switch hats here at will. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, also, sorry, sorry, go ahead. 
No, I just, I have, that's where I have the problem is when, you know, people start saying things like, well, you know, there's no reason for a civilian ever to know that. Well, hold on. So, yes, I agree that the application of basic small unit tactics doesn't come up in most people's life, you know, under normal circumstances all that often. Um, Sure. But... Are they, is there something wrong with them for wanting to know that? Hell no. Yeah. I I want, I want them to know that. I want them to understand that stuff because then, first of all, um, they're a deterrent against asshattery on the part of the, of the government or whoever else. And also, uh, you know, if they see something on the news, if they see something happen, Instead of of looking at it from a completely uneducated point of view and going, why can't you, you know, you you shouldn't have shot that guy. He was down. Well, no, if he actually knew something about it, he would know just because the threat is down doesn't mean they're no longer a threat. And, you know, I, there are, I can come up with thousands of reasons why it's not a bad idea for, you know, quote civilians, I can just hear it, you know, uh, a better word for that. to know yeah. these things. We really do. I know. And, um, it, yeah, I don't, I don't like it at all, but, um, yeah. Why, why would you think, why would you presume to think that, that visual citizens don't have the right to learn those and practice those skill sets? Because, uh, newsflash, there are a whole bunch of us out here that are now civilians that are pretty good at that shit. Yeah. What are you going to fucking and do? Are you going to men in black us and put, you're going to flashy thing us. You're and, not allowed right. to know this anymore. So erase that from your brain. Okay. Well, so you're saying normal people remember things that they were taught and now they're normal people. What's the difference between them and another person that's always been normal learning it. It's just who it's wants a, to know it for whatever logic. reason. It's just a logical flaw. Sure. I, got, I, got, I, I mean, I, I always, it all comes back to the same thing for me. It's if somebody wants to take a weapon away from you or doesn't want you to have a particular type of weapon or, you know, doesn't want you to know something. Mm. My first question to them or about them is, why don't you want me to have this? What are you planning to do? that would be impeded by my having this knowledge or having this device. Because if you don't do anything, you know, me owning an M203 is never going to affect your life one way or the other. If it does, you should be held accountable. And if it doesn't, then there's no purpose. It doesn't doesn't matter. It's circling back again to what we said a, a little bit ago. This is why we can't have nice things type of mentality. And, also, let me add to before we jump off the Sorry. subject, guys. So if we oh, I got truly Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Well I was gonna say real quick, if we truly believe in the things that we teach, like Pat, for example, if you truly believe that the illusion of security is important for people to see, and you truly believe that you're that you are bringing value and improving people's lives by bringing out this material, and me, if I truly believe that that saving people's lives is important, and I truly believe that everybody that should be empowered to intervene in somebody who is seriously wounded to allow them to live or to at least get them to care. Then why the fuck we want to not spread that knowledge around as far as we could. That makes no sense. Yeah. It's a tough pill to swallow. And and I want to remind everybody you're up against a trillion dollar a year government and business system that tells you the things that they want you to know and nothing else. So yes. I got f- actually five bullet points while you guys were talking. That's still about this topic of civilian versus <laughs> non-civilian. Number one, the people are the militia. Great. Yes. Shouldn't they know the things that the military knows or at least a good chunk of it? Why are we going to prohibit that? And let's go to well point, regulated. Right. Point number, which doesn't mean what people think it means. Right. Matt, no, exactly. it doesn't. That. People say that a lot. And regardless yeah. of you regulate it or not, what if I want to be a one man wolf pack? Don't you yep, gotta but- regulate shit. You can be regulated then. It means uh, <laughs> properly maintained and <laughs> performing <a> function. So, <laughs> yep, I'm regulating myself. Now mind your own fucking business and get lost. So let's go to the next point, which is uh, imagine this scenario, right? 
uh, just like Red Dawn. Oh my God, the Russians or the Chinese or whoever, the Mexicans are parachuting into our local town and they're murdering people. What what would be the response from these from the people that are angry already? Would it be, well, thank God we never taught the public how to do CQC because now, oh shit, well now we better teach them really really fast, right? And what? Uh, of course, there's people saying I can hear them already. Well, that would never happen today. If that's your thought, then I cannot help you. Go somewhere else. Don't come back. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, while we're talking about things that would never happen um, six months ago, um, we would never, it, it, most people would never have, uh, have believed that we would have shut the entire country down for two months. What if yeah. I told you, if you go to church, I will arrest you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's happened. Yeah. Sure. There's an old newspaper stand at my day job. That, ha- that hasn't been cleaned out in months because I'm sure those companies have been shut down and not stocking their papers. But on the front of the newspaper stand says, pastor arrested for holding mass. And mm-hmm. I, look at it, I look at it five days a week, every fucking day. Mm-hmm. Unreal. Who would have thought that? Yeah. Right. So that would never happen. Who would have thought that in January? So, so what's Seriously. the response if it does happen? Are you going to say, oh, thank God we never taught civilians, you know, we never let civilians own an M203 grenade launcher. Thank God they don't have those because now, oh no, oh, 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 I'm dead. Yeah, this is a well. <laughs> the uh, so you guys know, like the British government, they placed like se- severe restrictions on firearms starting in the early mm-hmm. night, like post World War II. What's funny is when they were staring down the barrel of the Nazis in World War II, and they were dealing with the Blitz, and it was there was a very real possibility of a land invasion by the German, by the Wehrmacht, into the British mainland. Because, you know, Hitler had already conquered all of Europe within a, a year. So what do they do? They start begging for firearms from the United States. And people are donating 1903 Springfields and all kinds of other weapons, shotguns and whatnot, so they can equip their National Guard forces. So people there will have firearms in case they need to repel an invasion. And what do they do as soon as the war is over? They take all these they fucking dumped rifles. them in the ocean. Exactly. Oh. I, oh, isn't that? Number one, it makes me kind of and, sick. And, People were putting notes under because they, we, they were assured that they would be returned, and people were putting notes under the the recoil pads and in the you know in the butt stocks with with names and addresses Jesus, on them. I never knew that, so I that they could be returned. Yeah, um, there are a lot of, uh, of of Brits that have written about rifles and shotguns that they got in lend lease, where um, you know. There would there would be a note under the recoil pad or a note in the you know in the butt stock saying you know hey this was donated by thus and such. There was actually a really famous target rifle that was sent over. Um, I'd have to find that exactly, but it it, it actually had a um, it had an in, inlaid plaque in the stock. It was a uh, it was a Springfield that had been turned into a thousand yard target rifle. And uh, it was one of the ones that was dumped in the ocean. <laughs> oh, it makes you kind of sick, man. Kind of? Yeah. A lot of just a priceless, beautiful antique pieces now would be. But, yeah, it's just I think that's really it, – it just shows you that this is – it's something about modern people, man. We can't – we cannot think five feet in front of our face and we're so – like this is – this is why it's it's funny. Like there's shows like Doomsday Preppers, and if you talk about preparedness to regular people, they'll usually look at you with a raised eyebrow. Now maybe you get a little more receptive audience now since we just went through basically a, a you know the U.S. government sanctioned us for a few months there. Mm-hmm. Before, oh, I, who, who else got a few phone calls? Hey, <laughs> um, dude, I guess you were right. You know where I can get a protective mask? Like, like yeah, absolutely. Last uh, yeah. last October, <laughs> give October twenty nineteen a call. Click. But we're right. But we're we're conditioned to just trust the system and assume that the system will always be there to provide for us. But that's historically stupid. Mm-hmm. I got I got three more points on this civilian versus government. Thing. Yeah, on. That. moving through. Uh, this is it's a very serious, very clear question. Is your life worth more than another person's life and let me no. t- let me get walk you through a scenario here you run a neighborhood watch you live very rural 
an average, which means sometimes it's longer. That's what she said. An average response mm-hmm. time for your local law enforcement is about 45 minutes. There are still places in the country where that's the case. Oh, yeah. I lived in one of them. Let's say there is a violent home invasion, and you do happen to live near a few buddies, and you have rifles, and you want to go fix this problem. And it's going to be 45 fucking minutes before the sheriff gets there, and it might be one cop. Not like 30, but one. And it's you and your buddies. With a non-functional weapon. Right. And this is all voluntary. This is not coerced. People voluntarily want to respond and help. You have an agreement with the people that if anyone ever breaks down my front door, please come help me. So, my next question, my follow-on question would be, is the life of these responders and this victim worth less than the lives of police and military? What do you think? No, of course and, not. And I the mean, follow-on, if, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, of course not. I mean, not. The, pe- people's lives are have just as much value as everybody else's. Right. So no matter say, what their job title is. So let's say this is regulated information or protected information, right? How to do close quarters combat. Okay. So if it's regulated and it's protected, and if there is a law that says you cannot know this information, what that means is the government is willing to kill you for it. There's no yeah. other way to look at it. Would you agree or disagree? Well, I think we've already established that that's right. the case. So if so you're not allowed to know this, we will threaten you with death. We will throw you in a cage. We will ruin your life. You're not allowed to know these things. That's what regulated means. When right. it comes to government, not private. And they're s- certainly happy to put you at an extreme tactical disadvantage because so you have to have their services. Right. Sure. So again, the monopoly, right? So this is just civilians versus people that are not civilians. And uh, I'm sorry we've been fucking hammering this point, but uh, that's just some food for thought. The very last point I have here, it's a quick one. There is some things out there that are well, pr- proprietary or protected, um, but it's on the private side. We gave you one government side, which is like the nuclear codes, right? Of course you don't want to publish those. Uh, but on the private side, here's a great example of some, I think, of something that is protected and proprietary and that you should not share openly. Uh, let's say you privately own a bank and you have a bank vault and you have a lot of money and cash and diamonds and high-end customers. And let's say you have hidden security cameras in the bank. Would it be maybe morally or maybe just not smart or maybe legally wrong to take all the information of where those cameras are and where they're pointed and where they're hidden and the codes for the safe, would it probably be not a good thing or not the right thing to take that information and widely and openly disseminate it? Yeah, definitely not. Uh, It certainly wouldn't be a good idea, but if you don't own that information, you know, I think that that's a whole separate issue. I mean, if it's yours and you're an idiot, I mean, you're certainly free to do that if you want to. Uh, but, it might be opening. Um, I don't you know, know. Well, I you know, I was thinking of another example here because where kind of where you're going is intellectual property. Um, you know, if I write a piece of software that does something, and it's you know something that's fairly unique and something that people are willing to pay money for, I don't know. Let's say something encryption related. Um, well, uh. I I certainly have the right to you know to charge people who use it mm-hmm. unless I've specifically released it you know and made it free and so I think you know I think that's kind of the same thing. There is one key difference though, it, as a bank manager or whatever, you you've made a contract with the people that deposit money, well, right. have safety deposit boxes at your bank. Right. So therefore by I mean, essentially by abnegating, I mean, it's maybe it's not spelled out in the contract. Maybe it is, but I mean, essentially you have, there's a, there's a fiduciary responsibility there, sure. um, which that would be my one key distinction. All right. So of course there, so I think we made it clear. Some things are kind of proprietary and what uncensored tactical gives the public, none of it is proprietary. So going back to point you know, number one. All right, let's let's move on. We gotta get moving forward. It's great, great info that I did not expect to happen tonight. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, number seven, historically, again, all of this oldest profession crap. Like you know, this, there's a debate of whether it's warfare or prostitution. You guys ever heard those two? Oh yeah. Well, regardless of whichever one's first, I don't give a shit. As long as there have been locks, there have been people 
that build locks, people that know how locks work, and people that have been literally paid to know where the weaknesses are in locks so that they can get through those locks when the customer locks himself out. So this knowledge about the brand new lock on the market can be tied all the way back to the very first lock ever. This information is not new. Locks are not new. Security systems are not new. So this is not the first time that someone has said, hey, there's a hole in that security system. Well, it comes back to people don't like to think about it. They don't like to hear about it. You know, they they want to, uh, uh, you know, they they want to think that their $20 uh, Walmart lock on their front door is going to keep everybody out. And that's their good operating assumption that, you know, some people live their entire lives getting away with. But then they're really surprised when, uh, you know, when somebody comes along and opens it, however they do it. And, you know, they go, well, <laughs> We're gonna do gosh, that. that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> People are a lot of people that uh, contact me and say, Hey, I had to call my locksmith for the first time. And this is funny. A lot of people call me after I've offered to teach them and they go, nah, no big deal. I'm too busy. I probably don't need that. I had, I have often, it's weird. Often I'll ask people if they want to learn. And within 24 hours, they get locked out of somewhere and they call me a <laughs> hundred bucks, a hundred bucks out. And, uh, they go, yep. wow, he came and he did this thing. And it was like 10 seconds worth of work. And I had to pay that motherfucker like a hundred bucks. And I'm like, oh, interesting. So moving mm. on from, from the oldest, as long as locks have existed, there have been people that know how to exploit them or the holes in them. Number eight, which we just rolled into, have you ever heard of something called a job? Some people get paid tons no. of fuck. Let me rephrase it too. We're going to do some new new subtitling here. You may be shocked, but people ask for this skill set. People ask for locksmiths to come find the gaps in their security system so that they can get back into their locked homes or locked cars or locked businesses. Now and and then they want them to go away and they don't want to hear about it again. Yes, and unless they lock themselves out again. Um, fuck. What was I going to say? Penetration oh. testing. Yes, plenty of different careers that utilize this type of information. Pen testers. So there are companies that hire. Oh, oh, I know what I was going to say. Companies that hire people that know that intentionally are supposed to break into facilities to test their security systems. And whether it's a locksmith or a penetration tester or like what they call like a red teamer or a security systems analyst, whatever. So what is the moral difference between someone who gets paid to test security systems and a locksmith and a regular person? Uh, Whether they have permission (laughs) Right. So the regulation is uh, nil. And in Florida, as much as I've looked into it, there is zero requirements to become a locksmith. I think a lot of people, I think there are some cases in which a convicted felon can't do it, but I think there's some cases in which a convicted felon can in some Lame. states. So you call your locksmith and you're like, people shouldn't know how to pick locks. And then you pay someone to pick your locks. And that person <laughs> might have just got out of prison for stealing. But hey, so, at least they're working on his job now. Yeah. And they have a skill set that's scary, right? That's so scary mm. that it's not regulated at all. So there are careers where that is your whole purpose in life to make money is to break into secure places. It's something else I was thinking about too, Pat. If you don't teach this skill set, right? If you didn't, well, how the fuck are people going to learn? Because guess what? The government doesn't teach you how to, how to pick locks. The government doesn't. How do you teach? You know what the, the entry techniques the government teaches you? It's a boot. So in some <laughs> cases, yes. So let me be clear too. I did uh, attend some very, very good training, and I actually gave them a nice shout out in the book that's coming out. Uh, some very good breaching instructor training with a company called Tees T E E S. I think it's mm-hmm. uh, energeticentry.com. If you guys are out there, they for the most part teach uh, military and law enforcement and first responders. Uh, the course that I'll be teaching with them later this year, it is recommended that you're a first responder, but I don't think it's required on their website. Uh, but the focus will mostly be for specifically for first responders. So I'm creating just a, a custom curriculum for them. Um, fuck, Matt, what was so I saying? So you're talking, well, here, so you're talking about a very, very, very yes. small oh, the boot. slice right, of the military the community. Well, here's the thing is that, is that there's way more demand for this skill set than there is these people. And 
I mean, as far as I, you know, as far as I've seen, I've never seen any kind of covert entry. Of course, now I wasn't any you know, type they're, of operator. They're out. Yeah, there, 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 there are, there are a few. They're and out then there, there man, are slim picking. That, yeah. yeah, and you get sent to private. There are private training uh-huh. organizations there it is. that that do the very same thing. Right. And now that being said, there are one or two places that really do this, but you know the amount of people that are exposed to that in a given year is probably well under 200 That's slim, well under 200. Let me so up, let me wrap up this point before I forget. Cause I'm probably more drunk than both of you guys. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> I drink less than one day a week. Um, so I s- attended some really good training with T's. Um, and for the most part, they teach some of the bigger batter tools. They teach the battering ram and, and the Hooli tool to pry a door open and to smash a door through. Uh, and those are usually, you're right, Matt, the boot, so to speak, is usually your first option uh, the for, fire. for what they call a tactical emergency entry. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes that is sometimes that is the most uh, practical and the most appropriate response. If I'm in my yeah. home and I'm being held hostage and me and a bunch of loved ones are in here tied up and there are bad guys with rifles, I want them to quietly and silently place some explosives on the front door and I want them to blow that motherfucker in. And I want good guys with good guns to come in who want to help me. That's what I want. Right. Sometimes that's not the right response. If a lady uh, falls and breaks her hip and she's in her home and she's on fixed income and she couldn't replace her door if she wanted to because she doesn't have the money for it in her budget. Ooh, should you, shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Let's blow the door off the frames. No, of course not. Right. Everyone knows that. This is not, this is not a setup. Of course, everyone knows that's not the correct option. But you get a cop out there and he goes, well... I was approved to make entry. I'm just going to make entry. Boot right through the door. Oh, not my door. I don't have to pay for it. We're just here to help. We're, we're not here to fix the door. And you people might laugh or you might snicker. You might make a face at me. That happens. There are cops out All there. All the time. Say that exact quote over and over. Yeah. And firefighters do it too. But I, oh, I, yeah. I understand that one a little bit better. Yes, it's better to break the door. Uh, than oh, sir, the whole sure. But, down. but let's be real. They do love to tear shit up. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, I so, a couple. I have two very good friends who are firefighters and wonderful guys. But I mean, for real, you know, when they can when they can go to town on something with you know with an axe and 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 whatnot. I mean, that's a good day. Well, yeah, especially because as a firefighter, you spend ninety percent of your time doing menial, mundane tasks. Unless you're on the medic, if you're on the truck, then you get to go actually out and run run EMS yeah. calls. But if you're on if you're on an engine company or a ladder company, you spend literally ninety percent of your time standing standing around watching your ball shrink. Um, so any type of any type of excitement is is good. But yeah, I mean I've heard it myself when I was working EMS. Though, I've heard you know, firefighters say, "Oh, insurance will pay for it." Okay, that's great, guys. But you're taking this lady to the hospital, and uh, her and you're broke. leaving her with a ginormous gaping hole in the front yes. of her house. Right. And so, now you know what I'll give credit where credit is due. In my town and in my county. They do not do that. That's good. If, if if they have to make a forced entry in a situation like that, mm-hmm. they will actually board it up or otherwise secure it, and and they won't leave it unsecured. Um, you know, they just they won't do it. That's awesome. So, but unfortunately, um, and they you know, and they that's not something that they even talk about. You know, I bet most people who live here don't even know that. Right, but. You know, if they had to come and axe your front door in or whatever to get to you because you'd fallen and broken your hip, there's going to be a cop sitting out here uh, until they can get a couple of firefighters over here right. with boards and whatnot to screw it shut. Right. And the people that are blindly anti cop, what do you got to say now? Right. That's a really, really nice thing for them to do. I like that a lot. And that should probably be written into a lot more agencies' policies. If you kick on a fucking front door and you have a vacant residence, you should either fix it or post someone post somebody there until it's fixed. That's just mm-hmm. like fifth, you know, fifth, fifth grade level logic. Like if you make a mess, pick it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it but it doesn't work that way in most places. No, let me know. throw in let me throw in one more variable for the boot scenario, right? Where the boot is the right the right answer. Uh, current events. I try and stay away from them, but has a cop <clears> ever made forced entry into the wrong house? <laughs> or, or, a fire, or a firefighter Has, or anybody right or guys in the army in iraq never right oh no so now 
Well, but, you know what the difference there, though, too. It, it let's leave out the whole you know active combat zone and all uh -huh. that. But um, uh, Pat, I know you're a um, uh, you're you're a law enforcement and a um, a naval force uh, veteran. Are you picking on? So me? you didn't not a, not a bit. <laughs> um, I was going to point out that. Uh, Something that you may not have seen in your travels is that ground forces, whether it's in training or in combat, a lot of the time are followed by a guy with a checkbook. And, <laughs> um, you know, it, you, shoot, you, you shoot a goat and, you know, and kick in a door. And, yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. Yeah, probably shouldn't have oh, done that, God. but you're going to the guy's going to get a check for 10 years worth of pay. Yep. So no let's problem. be real. We shouldn't have done that, but yeah, I mean, they're not real mad a lot of the time. Right. Hey, I'm sorry for backing over your generator. I do have something like that from my naval fighting force days, Terry, you motherfucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen to this. We did the, I did the counter drug and counter piracy was where I spent most of my time in the military. And during the counter drug ops, uh, God, you guys are going to love this, especially you, Matt. Um <laughs> So we did what's called minimally intrusive searches, and then we did destructive entries. So when we're looking for cocaine and shit like that, and we're we're not looking for like a pocket gram that someone has, we're looking for like rooms, like this, like several feet built into the boat or the structure that isn't accounted for. So we get permission from legal uh, back stateside, and we say we would like to drill, on, you know, this number of holes in this many locations. You know, for the purpose of this, because of this, this, and this. Great. Approved. Okay. Great. Super. That that was so fast. It only took seven seven hours to get permission. We drill the holes. We look. And we go, oh, great. Uh, there is or isn't stuff there. Either way, we've already drilled some holes. It's minimally intrusive. right? We've done some minimal destruction, just <laughs> drilling holes. Let's say we do or don't tear the wall down. Doesn't matter. Same answer at the end. Then the boat owner, the captain, goes, hey. You drilled holes in the wall. Or they say, hey, you tore down that wall and there are no drugs. Who's going to fix this? So listen to this. We were very specifically told and taught there is a form that the boat owner can fill out <laughs> where he can request that the U.S. government pay him for damages. Mm -hmm. Checks in the mail. I'm not done yet. We were told that we are not permitted to tell them about that form unless they asked about it specifically. Oh, that's shitty. And on the Dude. one scenario where I did give a captain one of those, I handed it to him, and I never read it before, so I'm reading it, and he's reading it, and he goes, we're getting ready to leave, and he goes, hey, yeah, the form says where the damage is and how much it costs. He says, but what do I fucking do with it? And I'm like, oh, just follow the directions. He says, he says, yeah, the directions are right down the damage. It doesn't say where to take it, where to send it, what to do with it. And I'm like, I read it. Exactly. And I'm like, huh. Okay, well, see you later. <laughs> wow. I had, to, I had to call legal back stateside, and I don't know if I called D.C. or just someone in Florida, but they were like, oh, just uh, tell them to bring it to the embassy. It'll be fine. And I'm like, uh -huh. okay. yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. It'll I'm, get round filed. So <laughs> suck my dick, Terry. <laughs> I know, I know some things have done some I, things. <laughs> I, I, I have to, I, I mean, I, again, to give credit where credit is due, um, you know, we tear a lot of shit up, but we're really good about overpaying to fix it. Oh, yeah. dude. You know, I you mean, I can't tell right you right how many right. $6 million goats you know, have gone to meet Allah, and I mean, seriously, what is a fucking what is a fucking goat worth? Even if it even if it's the only thing that feeds your family, you know, for a year, it's still not ten thousand dollars. No, I mean, is that come weird on. that the government is good at overpaying for damages but bad at overpaying their employees? Yeah, You're right. About that. Huh. Well, well also they don't here. overpay for damages here. <laughs> right. Be because because suburban suburban white people don't strap bomb vests to themselves and oh, fucking durka durka into the mall somewhere. Yeah. But that's another story. Yet, right? All right. So this this bullet point number nine needs some adjusting. The old title subtitle is Me Teaching You is not illegal, so suck it. Uh that's it. That's the whole paragraph. Uh, oh. we're gonna need to adjust that a little bit. And it's gonna be legality versus morality. They're both important. Uh, not yes. ending on the jail just, is good. Just, just end it with suck it. 
and then and it was suck it right uh legal versus moral you should try to be you should try to do both when you can uh but absolutely the one that should take precedence is being moral which i teach in my class it's talked about in my book it's built into my target assessment every time i teach one of my students here's how you make an entry like you said matt that's the first thing you have to answer is it moral for me to do this is it right as a human to get through this security system okay so uh we're going to change that but I'm going to move along because we've been over for an hour lately, but there's some good content here. I'm having Definitely. fun. And uh, fuck, another disclaimer at the very fucking end. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've been yelling at the audience this whole time, so thanks for sticking around. Yeah. This is not really... <laughs> I'm probably preaching to the choir because most people that listen to this show probably want to know these things and are probably okay with it. This might be a good episode to share with people that are uh, not all there. I don't know. How do you say that nicely? It's um, hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice word for it, Matt. You know, this you sounds... Oh, there, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this sounds funny from someone on a podcast, but quite honestly, I'm way past the point of trying to convince idiots of anything. Yeah, dude. No, I, I'm with you. Me and Pat actually just did a show about that. I mean, I'm I'm just like, okay, all right, Karen. You know. Uh, there's... Uh, Go ahead, Terry. I'm sorry to cut you off. Just, just you know... Burn whatever you want, yell about whatever you want, but stay out of my yard, stay out of my face. Right. If you do those two things, yeah, exactly. You (laughs) do those. You do those two. Yeah, you do those two things. You'll be fine. If you don't, you very probably will not. End of story. Yeah. There's a meme going around um, about the impending civil war or next conflict, whatever that's going to be, and it said something. It said something really good. It said. It said, we, there are people that will, will pick up guns and they'll drop the hammer when they have to, and we need them. And I thought, of course, the liberty movement needs them, just like they did in 1776. I hope that it's not tomorrow, but uh, there will probably be a time when that happens again. Uh, but they said, we need the people that won't drop the hammer. We need medics. We need people that are counselors. We need people that have spare space in their bedrooms. We need people that know how to work on cars. We need educators. We need speakers. We need people that know how to write. So... I am all about education. I don't want to fight you guys. We said in the beginning, right? I don't want to drop that fucking hammer ever. I don't too old for that shit, man. I know what price that comes with and I don't want it. I don't even like, so I used to make this joke when I was in law enforcement, like I'm pretty good at fighting. I have a pretty good track record of all the scraps I've been in. I'm pretty close to a hundred percent. Uh, that was a joke. I'm at a hundred percent of wins right. in the win column. Right. I'm good at fighting. Yourself enough, Pat. I'm good at fighting. I don't like it though because I don't even like to touch other people. I'm kind of a jerk. <laughs> like uh, the very few fights I was in in my f- short law enforcement career, my local career. So uh, not was, big on jujitsu then. I would no. I was very big on so, if I had someone and I knew the fight was coming, which is rare, but it happened. Um, I would. I was very good de-escalating up until I was able to get my gloves out of my pocket, and I would talk and talk and talk and put my gloves on and put my gloves on and then snatch them with the Velcro and go, okay, if you're saying the fight is on, now let's go. I don't like touching people. I don't like fighting. I sure as shit don't want to shoot somebody. And I definitely, once the threat is stopped, would be rendering first aid. So I don't want that to happen, but we do need educators, and I like to educate people about what is moral and what is legal and what should and shouldn't be. So there's my fucking soapbox. Sorry for yelling at the audience again, man. I don't know how I have. Ah, you always, you always say that shit, man. You're never yelling. I'm sorry. I just feel like I'm harping. She's passionate. Like a, ugh, that is true. I'm I, passionate. I can start yelling pretty easily. Yeah, Terry. Why don't you yell about this next point? It is literally <laughs> child's play for picking locks. Go ahead, take it off. <laughs> Well, it, it literally is. Um, <laughs> I mean, what else? What else can you say? I've uh, you guys make me feel like a dumbass now. Well, I mean, <laughs> That's you, right. you know, it's it's being really, really good at it isn't child's play. That's but correct. I mean, yes. I, I, you know, I, I can teach and have. I can teach a kid to you know, to, uh, you know, to, to open a, a pad, a normal master padlock in just a couple of minutes, yep. typically because a, a kid will, will listen very intently and do exactly what you tell them instead of, um, Think you know, oh, I already know how to do this or, you know, whatever. I, I mean, I have a, um, uh, a niece that I taught to, uh, to get out of handcuffs 
a while back when she went off to college mm -hmm. and you know because i thought yeah that'd probably be a good thing for a little tiny 100 pound uh female to know certainly and so uh, but she picked it up extremely quickly like faster than i did back in the day and so you know I, yeah this is not difficult stuff some of you're right. Mo a lot of it is simple and a lot of it you could, you could teach a child. There are people that do. All right. That's, that's fucking mostly self-explanatory. Number 11. This is the last one in the article. I'm going to update this article and add number 12 and I'll tell you what that is in a second. So number 11, lock sport is a growing legal hobby. So whether you like puzzles or whether you're looking for a hobby or some sort of low impact kind of sport challenge or community building, Lock sport is definitely a growing legal hobby where people that love working with their hands, they love puzzles, they love uh, just weird introvert communities. And that's a kind of, what do you, what do you call that? A uh, ox oxymoron, an introvert community. <laughs> uh, lock picking is great because you don't need a partner to practice it. Uh, so that exists. See, I just tilted my head back and watched that one go over the plate. Didn't even swing. Go ahead. Thanks, Terry. And no problem. Fuck you. Let's go to number 12. <laughs> All right. Number 12. The framing is important. We've hinted at it uh, a couple times this episode. It, it would be morally and probably legally wrong for me to say, I teach people how to pick locks and break security systems. If you're a scumbag and you want to rob people and murder people, come call me and I'll teach you everything you need to know. That would be bad. If I said, I have a skill set whose unique and sole purpose is to break into people's homes so that you can do a violent forced entry and tie them up and you'll never let them escape because you know all these secrets on how to apply restraints better, that would be bad. That'd be really bad. Instead, work for the government first. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, Matt. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, the framing is important. And... The skill set that I have is for well, any... They always say it's important when they want to arrest somebody for it. Intent, right? Mm -hmm. Intent is absolutely important, right? I mean, men's you know. Right, yeah. it's, that's a classic, uh, it's a classic moral debate. Two kids are in the, in the house and mom's babysitting both kids or, or mom's home with both kids. One kid is running through the living room, knocks, knocks a plate over because he's playing ball. And mom goes, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It was an accident. Next kid walks over, goes, huh, interesting. Knocks over a whole shelf of plates. And mom goes, how dare you? And the kid goes, what? The other kid did it. Of course. Yeah. It's intent. Right. So, yes, the same yep. exact act done with two different intents can be very important. And my intent is I want to help both first responders and people that aren't how to get through obstacles, locked obstacles, when there is an imminent emergency. Or how to secure their own environment. And how to secure your own environment, yes. And how to escape from illegally applied restraints. Which does happen every fucking day in this country. Someone gets tied up or bound or zip-tied or duct-taped. So, uh, or all of the above. Or all of the above. It's unfortunate. And uh, I want to protect people and make people better prepared. And here's another fucking thing while I'm on it, and I've finished my double whiskey and ginger ale. Start yelling. <sighs> That's another fucking thing. There uh, it is. Thanks, Terry. Uh, I know all of us know some people in law enforcement. Um, and I know that we watch the news. I know that we know how to read articles. I know that we have social media. How many fucking cases have you seen where this house was burgl burglarized by someone that picked the lock into the front door? How many of those zero. have you seen? I've seen zero. Me and every yeah. single cop I have ever talked to in my entire life, which again, there are thousands and thousands, I've asked them, most of them, hey, when's the last time you saw a call about a burglary where someone used lock picks? Oh, never. I don't know. Never. I even yeah. Googled it and had a hard fucking time finding a case for it. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you'd probably have to you'd probably have to talk to some federal people to even have a chance of running across more than one, right. you know, of those. And then it wouldn't be a quote burglary for theft. You know, it would be something else. Be like a fucking art heist. And you know, the thing is, too, honestly, if on a real practical note, if if I, my house is going to have to be burglarized, I'd much rather somebody pick my lock and steal my shit. So then at least that way they can close the door when they're done rather than having to <laughs> smash my fucking window or kick my door in because that way I have to replace my shit they stole 
and my fucking window. Oh, is, that's that's a thing. This is not my genius, but this is from Deviant Olaf, who says on one of his security assessments, he was talking to a company, and he said, uh, you need to secure this door. I'm paraphrasing. I hope I get it right. That's My intent is to get it correct. He says, you need to secure this door. And they go, why? And he says, well, you can use a tool to bypass this latch or this handle, and you can get right in. And they said, uh, something along the lines of, we're not really worried about it. Um, if someone wants to break into this server room, they'll just smash smash the window with a brick. And his comeback was something along the lines of, and you can go check his content on YouTube. I'm sure you'll be able to find it pretty easily. His lectures are really good. His response is something along the lines of, the problem is, if someone smashes that window, you'll know it within seconds or minutes or hours. If someone picks the lock into your server room, you won't know it for months and months and months. Right. And they will have gotten yep. away with that intel or that, that data and you will have no clue and your 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 business will be irreparably, irreparably damaged. I added yep, a lot to that's that. That's why I want I want bro I want broken stuff. If somebody so if somebody problem. comes in here, I want a hole. And you know. To be clear too, I've worked of the burglaries I worked on the street as a local uh, patrol deputy. Most of the more burglaries than not were from windows that were already open on the side or the back of a house. Uh, yep. Some of them were from smashed windows. Very few were from broken in front doors. Uh, most of them yeah. were from uh, locations in the home that were already unlocked. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, please, you know, look for, I mean, <laughs> the reason people steal shit is because they don't want to fucking work anyway, so they're not going to work any harder than they have to, so it's just the path least resistance. This was a lot of fun. Uh, you guys want to, if there's anything on the edge of your tongue that you're just dying to tell the audience, uh, feel free. Just one thing real quick these fucking jerk offs next door it's 1 30 in the morning these dickheads are lighting up fucking fireworks um so anyway <laughs> dude i'm about to go out there and strangle these fucking inbred cocksuckers but anyway so um, you can't keep that bad shit bottled up inside it's God, gone dude do up. <laughs> i've got the cork on right now so anyway what i was saying is that uh my dad told me when i was uh much much younger years ago you know my dad was an alcoholic asshole but he had some really good sayings and one of them was a locked door only keeps an honest man honest. Mm -hmm. And of course, what that means is that security, like if you look deeply into it, security is only, there's no such thing as perfect security. No, and it's I about time. If, yeah. And exactly. layers. I think if security we, has layers and ogres right. have layers, which for the record, my book, my editor took that phrase out. I think I wrote ogres have layers and security has what layers. What the fuck? Yeah. They. <laughs> I didn't put it back in. I just fucking wanted to get it published. It's been too long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on the audio book, so, I'll add that in as a perk. Definitely. So, so what that means then, right, is, is that people don't have an understanding nearly as well as they should about what their security actually entails. And there's, I mean, we all know people, tons of people out there that think, oh, if I just turn this deadbolt, then my house turns into a fucking castle. Yeah. No. It says, <laughs> it says dead. It must not move ever. Deadbolt. <laughs> well, and and because nothing happens, right. statistically speaking, enough of the mm -hmm. time, they figure that what they did worked. Just like yeah, that's your false you know, positive. Yeah, when it, when a guy goes to the, you know, somewhere in uh, the Southwest Asia operating area, gets a CIB and manages to stay alive, and then he comes back and he thinks he's a ninja. Well, <laughs> Terry, what's a CIB? Combat infantryman badge. Uh, uh, yeah, it, we can talk about this later. I'm just being a dick, but I mean, you know, it's the same. It's the same exact sort of thing. You know, it's a uh, delusion of adequacy, I guess. Uh, I'm going to add a point here, which I think will also bring some value to the audience. Someone else wrote an article that is similar to this whole topic, and it's it's linked in my FAQ article. Uh, this is from Lockpick Extreme. They wrote an article called. Uh, lockpicking knowledge is not a crime and the very second third fourth paragraph ish says criminals don't pick locks and they have a website which is source linked to an fbi webpage, and they say these numbers here so get out your mental calculators 60 percent of burglaries were forcible entry 33 percent were committed by entry through an unlocked door or window 6% were forcible entry attempts or failed forcible entry attempts. 60, 
70, 80, 90, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. And there's some decimal points. So 99.3, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, that adds up to 100. Mm-hmm. So if there are lockpicking uh, burglaries out there that are known to the FBI, they make up less than 0.1% of all burglaries in the U.S. Right. And what that means, essentially, is uh, if you harden your doors and your windows to a reasonable degree, you're probably never going to be burglarized. Yep. Uh, I talk about that in the book. Successfully. The, the defense should match the defense should match the offense that you're worried about. So if you're worried about someone punching you in the head, maybe don't hold your hands over your junk and wear a helmet. Yeah. Wear a helmet. So if you're worried about someone breaking into your home, harden up your windows, harden up your door hardware, not your pins within the keyway, but you should do that too. It's not very expensive and it's a pretty good upgrade. All right. I'm going to pee my pants fellas. Uh, and I don't have much more to add. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have to pee. You don't have so to pee. whatever. Would you wear a diaper? Uh, already, no. Podcast just a, <laughs> just a just just a grown ass man. I don't have to pee. Well, let me close. So I guess head. once you get be a certain age, then you have to pee all the time. But I'm not there yet. You're so there yet. you are young. I'm getting close at heart. Oh hell no! So my goal is to bring value to the audience in every single episode, even if the value is just a little bit of humor. But hopefully, we got you some real value today. Here are some ways you can help the show if you're interested. Uh, they're free up front, so you can share this with your friends that might also find value in this episode. Uh, that one's free. Like and subscribe on whatever platform you're on. I also don't ask a lot, but if you can do a review on whatever platform you're on, that would be great. Uh, head over to the website. At the bottom of every web page should be a sign up for our email subscription. For three years now, I have sent out zero emails to bother people. When I have really big news, I will release those emails. Uh, probably the book in the next few months. I'll do a big email drop on that. That helps us a lot. Uh, for less than half a cup of coffee a month, you guys can support our Patreon subscriber. The link will be in today's show notes. Um, I'll just give you a shout out on the show and you will be keeping the lights on for this podcast. Uh, all of your content is free on uncensored tactical, but behind the scenes, it does cost quite a bit of money every month and every year for all the products and services we use to get this published. Uh, and we have a big training event, uh, over with the folks at tease later this October of 2020. Uh, if you're interested in putting together some training with me, you can host it or you can come to me. Uh, just shoot me an email at uncensoredtactical at gmail.com. We'll try and put something together for you to get you some hands-on, high-value, high-return-on-investment training. Uh, and the book should be out in about two months. And that's all I have for you folks. Terry, Matt, thanks so much for, for uh, spending time with me. Terry, can you give your plug one more time for Instagram? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at CDI Tactical. Matt? Always glad to be on the show with you, Pat. So... Uh, if you want to find me, Twitter, your best uh, option, at status quo pod, email the status quo at gmail.com, and website is the status quo.net. Blog posts, articles, uh, show notes, all the episodes are there, as well as our Patreon sign up link you'll find. And for any of you out there struggling, you can go through my links to find both of them. Uh, you can also, it's also it's status, not status, S T A T I S T. You know, right, folks. That's... Go ahead, Matt. Oh, not me. Go ahead. Just, All right. just sit down. Fuck it. We're done. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>